Hey, hello and welcome to this quick update video by Flowmotion. Maybe you have checked your Creative Cloud desktop app today and saw that there is a new version of After Effects ready to install for you. But what's new? Any new cool features? Indeed, a lot of new 3D features. Some of them were already in the beta version and if you follow my channel you may have already seen a few of them. But the winner of today's update, in my opinion, are the new presets that we got. 33 completely new ones. And yes, finally we can use some presets for our work, as they finally reach the state of the art. Or at least pass my quality check. I will show you the most interesting ones today and also how to use them. So let's do this. As mentioned, the biggest update is in the 3D space of After Effects. So first things first. If you create a camera or a light now, you also get their properties in the properties panel, which makes this just so much easier to use. So thanks Adobe for that small handy improvement. And another small but good one is this one here. You need an asset. So what you typically do is to go to Adobe Stock and search for it. Let's say I want to create a mockup. So I search for a smartphone here in the 3D category. This one seems to do the job. So I license it. Once done, I can simply open it up within the After Effects library now and drag and drop it out here. Yep, <laughs> indeed super handy. But there are also major improvements to the 3D world. You can now set layers to accept shadows only. So they work as shadow catchers and you can even tint the shadow color in each color you wish for better integration. And this not only works for solid layers, but also for 3D objects. Yes, that really helps selling it a lot. Another must have also made it into the new version, support for embedded animation in 3D models. If your model has animation in it, you can now select it in here in the animation options. And indeed, you can have more than just one animation within one file and the length will change based on your selection. But also worth mentioning that you can slow down those animations as you like. As there are no keyframes in it, it will always be super smooth. Also new in the 3D world is that you can use effects from the 3D channel category. For example, fog. Just apply it on the pre comp 3D element and it is now depth aware. And yes, this totally helps integrating this troll into this foggy scene here. That would be a masking nightmare without the fog effect. So same goes with the 3D channel extract. That allows you to create a depth mat. And yes, you can do all the great stuff you are used to with this, like using it as a luma mat and now you can apply effects and they are now also depth aware. And of course you can use it as depth mat for depth of field, for example. Adobe, you are on the right track. Depth of field within the camera setting would still be a huge thing though. Now, as promised, let's jump to the secret winner of today's update, the new presets. Oh, and I'm only showing you those new ones that I think are usable, because unfortunately not all of them passed my quality check. In the background category, we have two new anime style ones, radial and speed lines. With nothing selected, double click on the preset and it will create the layer as well as all necessary effects for you. Great, the 2D text box is another nice one. Again, with nothing selected, double click on it and it creates a shape box for us. In here, you can select any text you have created and the shape will adjust according to the text, even if you animate it. Oh, and it also follows the text and you can really customize this. Dynamic frames are also useful and there are four of those. Again, just click on it and select the footage you want to use. The bounding box is just great for motion graphic stuff. And by the way, the full list of all new presets is in the description. Of course, categorized. If you ever needed to create infographics, the next ones are just a time saver, like a huge time saver. We have bar, line and radial graphs now. They all work the same, depending on where in your timeline your playhead is, the graphs will start animating in at that point in time and you have full control over all of this and 
all of this is already linked and ready to go. Well, and it works just great. Another time saver are countdowns now. If you have ever tried to create one on your own with maybe the numbers effect, you know that setting this up takes ages and you haven't even started animating. Now just search for countdown in your effects and presets panel and there is one for each situation. I just go with the timer countdown and boom, ready to go, fully customizable. Different font, make it 3D, add a glow and here we go. The last one that I want to show you before I let you try those yourself is in the transition category, the inky ones. So let's use the inky iris wipe as before, just double click. And we can now use that as an alpha mat for whatever we want. And if you are more into motion graphics, try this one on a title and reveal the next text with the inverted mat. Simply click that inverted switch here. And if you can handle it, also use the transition as a displacement map at the same time. What do you think? Are any of those new presets useful to you? And what do you think about the new 3D tools? Let me know in the comments. Hey, and I'm answering all your comments, so try it out. And for now, I wish you a lot of fun with the new features in After Effects. <laughs>